Thank you all. Good afternoon. I'm, I'm going to take a few minutes um, to talk a little bit about a variety of subjects. But the first thing I'm going to do is hijack the whole conversation to talk to you about safety. What you see there is a hard hat that was worn by a young man, 29 years old, with a wife and a new baby, who fell 10 feet to his death. In some ways, I'm pleased to say it wasn't a Jacob's job site. In other ways, I'm, I'm not pleased because I think perhaps if it had been a Jacob's job site, he wouldn't have died. But our industry has, without a doubt, a horrific record on safety. The construction industry kills two people a day, right now. Two people a day. 244,000 people were injured badly enough to become a recordable incident in 2010. If you just take engineering businesses, architectural businesses, technical professional services businesses, uh, last year they killed 51 people. And 82,000 people were significantly injured. 82,000 people. There's a recordable incident rate. It says what your chances are of, of being injured among 100 people. And the recordable incident rate of our industry is 3.6. That means that, that three and a half, four people, however you want to round that off, out of every 100 will be injured every year in our industry. That's ghastly. That's terrible. And, and we all have an opportunity to do something about that. And what I want to encourage you to do, and what I want to talk about a little more today, is, is what we could do. First off, we, we could make sure we do the things that we know keep people safe. That means wearing personal protective equipment, hard hats and safety glasses and gloves. That means keeping workspaces clean and free of debris. It means, as, as some folks who walked around with me today learn, holding on to the handrail. Interestingly enough, at Jacobs, the primary cause of injuries to our office staff is falls on stairs. And we really, really stress using the handrail. Some of those injuries are, are severe, broken bones. And yet people routinely see the stairs as something they shouldn't, shouldn't worry about. We go up and down stairs every day. But the fact is, it will hurt you, or it will hurt a friend of yours, and you have the opportunity to demonstrate by how you behave and how you ask others to behave whether you keep them safe or not. It's all about caring. How many of you use your cell phone or text when you're driving? Tell the truth, it's not a, okay? You're not gonna like this next picture. Young lady driving that vehicle was texting her girlfriend. She had another girl in the car with her. They pulled out into a street. That motorcycle was doing about 70 miles an hour. As you can imagine, no one survived. These were people your age. Well, not all of our ages, but some of your ages. And this didn't have to happen. Could it possibly be so important that you have to text and drive at the same time? And I know you're thinking, it won't happen to me. And, and God willing, it won't happen to you. But it might happen to one of your friends. It might happen to one, your brother or your sister or, or a neighbor. And it's a horrible thing. And so before I get into the, the, the bulk of my presentation, I want to ask you to take the time to care for yourself and care for the people around you. Because if we can all engage in that way, these injuries, these accidents, these fatalities can be stopped. We can have zero incidents and injuries. And I'll hold out Jacobs as, as, as a step in that direction. I told you the industry averages 3.6 injuries per 100. Jacobs averages 0.4, one-ninth of the total. 
And it's only because our people have decided to care about one another. That's what separates what we do from what other people do. So if you come away with nothing else from this conversation, if you just please take being safe home with you and think about what you can do to keep yourself safe and keep the people around you safe, it'll make a big difference in all our lives.